Good morning. Welcome to worship on this first Sunday after Christmas, December 27th. This morning, we will not be uh, doing a worship service uh, with our staff and tech team here at Atonement Lutheran Church. We're giving our production team a rest. Behind me, you'll see a caption of the tech booth where all of our magic happens with our editors piecing together all of the elements for our worship services, and they have been doing a tremendous job uh, through these last months, and especially Advent and Christmas with multiple worship services per week. So we thought we'd give them a break. But not only that, uh, today is also an opportunity for us to worship with our brothers and sisters around the Synod, churches in Montana and Wyoming that have uh, contributed all of their own elements to make this singular worship service where we as the Lutheran churches of the ELCA uh, join together and lift up our prayers and our songs and our hymns to God in one voice. So welcome to worship as we worship with brothers and sisters from around the Montana Synod of the ELCA. Greetings and Merry Christmas to you. I am Lori Jungling. I'm serving as the Bishop of the Montana Synod, and I come to you today with my colleagues, uh, Pastor uh, Peggy Paul Lutzinger, as well as Pastor Jason Asselstein, as we bring you this uh, first Sunday of Christmas uh, uh, service of hymns and uh, readings and prayer. Uh, we offer this to you as a gift. I come to you today from Our Savior's Lutheran Church in Great Falls, Montana. Thank you to the congregation for sharing their space with us today so we could be uh, Christmassy and uh, experience uh, the full uh, 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 visuals of Christmas. So thank you to them. I would also like to invite you during this Christmas season to remember to share your gifts. Share your gifts with those in need. Share your gifts with those who um, are hungry or without clothing or without housing. And share your gifts with your congregation and with your church. And yeah, with us at the Montana Synod. Uh, I, it, it, we uh, still need your support to continue the work of the ministry of the gospel. So please find a place in your heart, if you are able, to share uh, financial resources or your gift of energy or whatever you can offer uh, to provide uh, support and uh, equip the ministry of the gospel in this synod. We begin with an opening prayer. Let us pray. Today we gather to recall the mystery of our redemption in Jesus Christ. Although sin drew us away from God, God never stopped loving us. The, the prophets told of the coming of a Messiah who would initiate a reign of justice and peace and righteousness and love. And the promise was fulfilled in the incarnation of Jesus Christ. So let us now reflect with joy on this wondrous mystery. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, verses 5 through 8. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. And this is the name by which he will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. Therefore, the days are surely coming, says the Lord, when it shall no longer be said, as the Lord lives, who brought the people of Israel up out of the land of Egypt. But as the Lord lives, who brought out 
and led the offspring of the house of Israel out of the land of the north and out of all the, the lands where he had driven them. Then they shall live in their own land. Here ends the reading. Let us pray. Grant, O God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may move our every human heart, that barriers dividing us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. And what with our dis divisions healed, we might live in righteousness and justice through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The second reading today comes from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 11, one of my favorite texts. Isaiah proclaims, A shoot shall come out from the stalk of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, a spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. Righteousness, right relationship, shall be the belt around his waist, and faithfulness the belt around his loins. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain. 
for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nations shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. Gracious God, we wait for the day of your peace and your right relationship to come among us. May we help to bring about this peace in our world. May we bring your love into our families, into our communities, into our churches, into the church nations, and into our world. Amen. A reading from Isaiah 9. But there will be no gloom for those who were in anguish. In the former time he brought into contempt the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. But in the latter time he will make glorious the way of the sea, the land beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the nations. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light, those who lived in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nations, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests on his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Here ends our reading.
reading from Luke's Gospel, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to um, her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, you come to us as a vulnerable, innocent baby. You come to us in humility and vulnerability. As we ponder the mystery of God incarnate, God in the flesh, be with us and bring your transforming spirit upon us that we might show your love and care to those we encounter, especially to those who are most vulnerable and in need. We pray these things through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen.
The fifth lesson comes from the Gospel of John, the first chapter. This is also one of my favorites. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him. And without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Now there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of humans, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth, the gospel of our Lord. Let us pray. God of power and might, you are beyond all time and space. You are the word who has come to dwell with us in our lives, in our homes, in our families, in our nations. May we never fail to reject, re recognize your majesty, and may we never fail to share the light of your Son, Jesus Christ, to all who would receive him. May we give praise to all, you in all that we do. Amen. A reading from Matthew, the 28th chapter. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. 
Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you to the end of the age. Here ends our reading. 